Duxiga boarding ke ya malala ha e Amano. Amano boarding and day school. Here, uh, so welcome to Amano boarding and day school. So this uh, new program is Amano e-learning program. So uh, we want to start our program. So me, Abdurrahman Musa Ismail, a chemistry teacher. So we want to continue our classes. Uh, if you remember, we have started this chapter. So it was organic chemistry. So we took uh, introduction to organic chemistry. But this program, uh, we want to restart uh, our chapter. So it was organic chemistry, introduction to organic chemistry. So we have to start organic chemistry. Also, uh, it's very important to define organic chemistry. We came across the definition of organic chemistry. We mentioned that organic chemistry is the study of carbon substance. What is, uh, we, or we, can, uh, we can put it another way. We said what? Uh, it is it's a branch of uh, chemistry. Uh, it deals with carbon compounds. That's what we said. So organic chemistry is divided as organic chemistry. We can divide. It is a branch of chemistry. It's a part of chemistry that deals with carbon. So I can say uh, it deals with carbon elements, it deals with carbon compounds, it deals with carbon substances. So you can define in this way. Uh, can we put it another way? Yes, we can put it another way by saying what? Uh, is the state of natural substance. Is the state of natural substance. Why are we saying so? Uh, because uh, most of natural substances contain carbon. That's why we are saying organic chemistry uh, is the state of a natural substance. Is the state of natural substance. Uh, you see, if it is the state of carbon uh, or it deals with carbon, it contains this carbon compound. This it contains what? Carbon compound. So organic compound. This are carbon compound. This. Where can we get carbon compound? This. Uh, most of the organic compound. This we get from where? From living things. Say plants and animals. Here you see, uh, organic chemistry. It's a branch. It's a branch. So in order to make a sense, when we are studying organic chemistry. Uh, in order to make a sense of us, uh, we have arranged it. We have grouped organic chemistry into families, into families. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't make a sense. It doesn't make a sense. So we have to arrange organic chemistry in families. If you remember in organic chemistry, uh, you remember periodic table. Periodic table. You see periodic table, it is around 18 groups. In secondary level, uh, we do around eight groups, eight main groups. Uh, so why are we grouping this uh, periodic table in order to make sense? For example, group one, group two, group three, group four. So organic, organic chemistry, uh, same principle with the inorganic uh, chemistry, like periodic table. So we can arrange into families. We can arrange into families like alkenes, alkenes, say alkynes, alkyl, alcohol, carboxylic acid, ester, say ether, say aldehyde, ketone, amines, amides, whatever. So at that time, it makes, a, it makes a sense. So we can do one group at a time. The other group another time. So uh, that is we arrange the organic chemistry into families. They are arranged in families. They are arranged in what? Families. Consider here. Here we have what? We have a general formula. What do we call general formula? This kind of formula is called a general formula or family formula or family formula. Consider these three different formula. These three different formula indicate to you three different families, three different groups. For example, if you consider this one, C1H2N plus 2, this indicates to you a family called alkene. So each group, I say each family, it has, has uh, say each family has what? Uh, a particular general formula. For example, alkenes, alkenes should, uh, should fit this formula. What about alkenes? They should uh, fit this formula. What about alkynes? Alkynes, they fit what? This general formula. So each group has what? Uh, each group should have what? Uh, particular general formula. Particular general formula. That's why we are saying organic chemistry are arranged in families. So each family should have what? Uh, physical properties, chemical properties, uh, say general formula, say functional group, for example. Alkenes, this example, alkenes, they should have, they should contain double bond. What about alkynes? They should contain triple bond. Alkenes, uh, alkenes, they, again, alkenes, they contain single bond 
between all atoms. Between all atoms. So uh, I can't say a member from alkene. I, can, I can't convert. I can't. I can't put in under the alkenes because they are under different families and the different families. So organic chemistry are classified into families, into groups, into groups in order to make a sense. In order to make a sense. Here we have a concept map. Here we have a concept map. So we go through it. For example, in this introduction to organic chemistry, here we have organic compounds. Uh, again, consider here organic compounds tend to be nonpolar. Most of the organic compounds are nonpolar. We came across polarity and nonpolarity uh, in chapter two. Uh, you see, uh, within uh, they have a low melting and boiling point. It's generally, uh, usually insoluble in water because they are nonpolar. If, if they are a polar, uh, they should soluble in water and are usually flammable. And are usually flammable. Are uh, usually flammable. So they burn well when you apply in the oxygen. Okay, these are organic compounds. Here we have carbon atoms. Here we have what carbon atoms? Say form. So carbon atom is form for covalent bonds. You see carbon atom, carbon atom it has six electrons. Two electrons we can put in ferrous shell. It has four electrons. It is uh, outer shell, valence shell. So carbon should have what? Four electrons. It has what? Four electrons. Which means these four electrons it can share with another four to form what? Four single covalent bonds. Four single covalent bonds. So carbon can form four single covalent bonds because it has what? Four electrons in this outer shell. In this outer shell. So it, it makes what? Four covalent bonds. Here we have carbon atom half a tetrahedral shape. So we came across the shapes, or we came across what we call uh, molecular geometry in chemical bonding and structure. So carbon, for example, methane, or carbon uh, tetrahydride, carbon tetrachloride, it forms what we call tetrahedral shape. So this is the shape. So it forms tetrahedral shape, uh, uh, three-dimensional uh, three shape, tetrahedral shape, are uh, written as are written as so how can we how can we write expanded condensed skeletal structural formulas so we shall see this part so don't be uh, don't, don't worry about this we shall see types of formula types of formula so organic common this uh, can form a different formula uh, they do what we call like, expanded condensed skeletal structure or what we call displayed formula say general formula say uh, what we call uh, what we call ball and stick formula so uh, they do so many formula don't worry about that so we shall see and name it by how can i name we shall see the name itself by using what we call iupac what we call uh, iupac iupac system international union pure and applied chemistry so we are using these rules we are using these rules we are using these rules as alkenes and with uh, an end with n for example, alkene should, a, uh, should end what we call in. The suffix should be in. What about alkene is in? What about alcohol is all? What about carboxylic acid is oic? What about ketone is own? What about aldehyde is al? For example, I can say methane. It is an alkene. I can convert uh, into methanol. Alcohol, I can say, uh, say methanol. Uh, I can say what we call another one, which is ketone, is a known, which is ketone. So this in, uh, indicates you, or say this is the suffix, so it indicates you the family. It indicates you the family. Here I have organic compounds. Organic compounds. Uh, organic compounds with groups of atoms call it. For example, some of the, com uh, some of the organic compounds, they contain what we call fractional group. Again, fractional group, we shall see this one, fractional group. So, fractional group uh, most of the time is a group of atoms or bonds which is responsible for uh, the chemical properties of that particular family. So, we shall see this one itself. For example, uh, alcohol is they contain what we call hydroxide group as fractional group. Alkenes they contain double bond. Alkynes they contain triple bond. Carboxylic acids they contain COOH. So these are the examples. These are the examples. So fractional group. So m some uh, organic compounds should have what, or most of organic compounds should have what we call uh, fractional groups. Fractional groups. Again, uh, show similar behavior. For example, if they contain same fractional group. If they contain, if these organic compounds or if these uh, organic families, uh, if they have a same functional group, uh, which means they behave in a similar way. They behave in a similar way.
uh, like alkenes, alkynes, aromatics, alcoholics, ethers, thiols, aldehydes, ketones, each group, each family. For example, alkene is a family. Alkene is another family. Say aromatics, say alcoholics, ethers. You see all these things. You see all these things. All these things. Here we have. All these things are families. Aldehyde is another family. Ester is family. Amine is amide is. They are all families. They are all families. They contain a different function of groups, which means they, they behave in a different ways. They behave in a different ways. So okay, keep going. Here we have what? Uh, there are other categories, but we will not uh, consider on this chapter. So this level, including ketones, aldehydes, ethers, and carbohydrates. So we will not see, the, uh, we don't want to do this. We don't want to do this. We don't want to do. For example, these are organic compounds. For uh, aldehydes. We don't want to do it in this uh, because it's not our specification. Say etheris, say carbohydrates, say proteins. Here you can see ketones. Here you can see ketones. So we don't want to do this. We don't want to do this. So we will focus on, we will focus on some families like alkenes, say alkenes, alkynes, uh, substituted halogen alkenes, uh, substituted halogen alkenes, say alcoholis, carboxylic acids, and esters. And esters. So these are the families we want to focus on. We want to do in this chapter. We want to do in this chapter. You see, these other uh, families like uh, aldehydes, ketones, carbohydrates, and proteins. We are not going to do. We are not going to. We are not going to do. But our specification indicates you, uh, students should be able to understand what we call alkenes. Well, what we call alkenes, alkenes. You have to differentiate halogen alkenes, say alcoholis, carboxylic acids, and esters. And esters. Okay. And esters. You see some of the products of organic compound, these are here. For example, here you can see alcohol. Here you see some gas. Uh, it is first three of alkenes, like it can be methane, it can be but, uh, uh, methane, propane, butane gas. It can be most of uh, most of uh, most of the gases we use in our home is or gas cooker is uh, it contains butane gas. Here you see hexane. Here you can see some ketones. Here you see aldehydes. Aldehydes. You can see all these things. So these are the products of organic uh, chemistry. You see carbon. Carbon. So I want to uh, I want to summarize my lesson here. So carbon, or we define it organic chemistry as the study of carbon. Or it is a branch of chemistry that deals with carbon. So carbon is very important in organic chemistry because carbon has ability to form single bone. It can form single bone. It can do double bone. Say triple bone. Here is a triple bone. Uh, my student is triple bone. Uh, within this ability, because it's almost single, it do double, say triple, it, uh, it can do all. Which means it makes a millions and millions of compounds, where it is equivalently bonded to. It can react with hydrogen, it can react with oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and other nanometals. This is a unique property. It is a unique property for carbon. So which unique property? You see, this unique property is called catenation. It is called what? Catenation. Consider here. This is called catenation. So catenation is the ability that carbon yields. It produces chains and rings. Chains and rings by forming covalent bonds with other uh, of the same uh, elements. Okay, thank you. This is our first lesson.